Hello. Whoops, let me unmute myself. Hi there. Good day, good afternoon, good morning. I'm glad to be back with you guys. It uh, has been another interesting day in uh, modern history. And here we are again to dispel any thoughts of it by doing some drawing together. Now, um, we are constantly trying to refine and uh, improve this little production. So um, today's version has a 10 minute countdown so that you can be alerted to it and find your way here. So um, I'm glad that you're here for drawing party number two. Um, okay, so let's get ready because we have a few things we're going to be doing, but I want you to get ready. Today's task will not be will not require a lot of art supplies. All you'll need is a ballpoint pen and some paper, or uh, a drawing pen, or even a pencil. You could do this with any implement and some paper. You'll need paper, unless you want to. Yes, you'll need paper or an iPad or something, something to draw on. Um, as I've told you, I am. I mentioned yesterday. I am not in my house in New York, but I am in my sister and brother-in-law's house in Phoenix, Arizona. And when we kind of, when we came here, it was um, obviously without much preparation. We were somewhere else. Uh, we were in Palm Springs on vacation and we had to cut it short and come here. So the only art supplies I had with me was my um, iPad because I was traveling really light because we were just gone for a few days. I had I had a note I had a sketchbook and I had a, a, a couple of pens and some fountain pens, but I didn't really have any other materials. So I have been scouring the house and I've managed to dig up some art supplies, um, including this set of uh, art markers that I've never I'm not familiar with this brand, but there are 18 of them here in different colors. So we'll see. These may come in handy. Um, my sister in law also uncovered this set of um, pastels. And we've also managed to ugh, cobble together some various colored pencils, and we found a pencil sharpener. So we're good. No watercolors, but in fact, when we went to Costco, um, a few days ago to buy some provisions, I thought, you know, there must be some kind of art supply thing one could find at Costco, right? Like a kid's, <clears throat> a kid's art set or something. No, I found nothing. And every moment that I was in Costco was like more and more nerve wracking. Like, oh my God, there are people everywhere and they're touching things. And ugh. so I had to flee um, without anything, but I've got plenty and you don't really need anything. To do any of the stuff that we're going to do together, I don't know. I think we can always improvise. I've managed to find a lot of ballpoint pens and highlight markers, so there's plenty, and hopefully you have plenty too. So yes, it's all good. We are ready to rock. Now here's the other thing for today's project that I want you to maybe spend a minute minute gathering, which is we're going to do a meditative exercise, and we're going to do something that I think is very calming and centering and points out one of the most important things, one of the most important qualities the drawing has for me, which is the ability to clear my mind and to meditate. I've always thought that I wasn't a person who could meditate, that my mind was too much like a, like a, a rat on a wheel. Um, but the fact is the drawing allows me to slow down, calm down, and be present. So so today's exercise is, is going to be that. So we're going to draw something that is complex. So I want you to find – now, in the case of what we're talking about right now, um, today, it is uh, – the example I'm going to show you is drawing a piece of toast. Some of you who have taken the class seeing at Sketchbook School – Will be familiar with this exercise. It's one of my favorite things to do uh, as a kind of intense, deep diving, kind of calming 
exercise. So drawing a piece of toast. But if you don't happen to have some toast handy, and I am going to use, I don't know if you can see this, but this is a bowl of granola. Just a bunch of dried granola in a, in a little dish. And so what I want you to look for is something in your house that is um, organic, random, complex. So organic, random, and complex. It could be a piece of driftwood. It could be a complicated, um, yeah, any kind of piece of wood that has complex grain in it will work. Um, a piece of bread will work okay, but toast works better. Bread tends to have very even grain, and we don't want we want something that we can focus on, that we can kind of dive deep into it with our minds. So it needs to be very complex. So it could be, um, I don't know, it's up to you. Really find something in your house that can function this way. There's something also that isn't specific. So like I wouldn't draw necessarily uh, something that you can recognize. You know, so like, you know, at first I thought like, well, you could say like, um, like this pen jar, but I don't really think so. I don't think that that's going to work quite as well as something organic, random, and complex. Okay, so spend a couple of minutes looking for that, and I'll blather on a bit. Let me know when you've got some stuff. Um, but yeah, so something that is, and we're going to spend, I don't know, as long as we want drawing it, but but we're going to, um, I'm going to, so what I want to do now is I want to, um, well, I want to talk a bit more about, about the, the power of drawing and the importance of drawing right now, because I think that what are the things that we can do to feel balanced or secure, or at least a little bit less freaked out? So I think that information is important. I think it's, I, I don't know, I, I like to read some news in the morning, you know, just to make sure like some, well, I was gonna say <laughs> to find out if something terrible's happened, but, I'm pretty sure that would be in the paper anyway, but but yeah, just just get some basic information, know some information, but not spend the whole day, you know, uh, checking and checking and checking, because I think that that makes me and possibly you just edgier. So you need to have enough information to know, you know, to be informed, but then of course you need to have other things to do. And uh, I'm working, you know, we're scheduled school is continuing to work. We're doing a bunch of stuff, but so there's that, you know, so that part of life is normal of, of working every day. Schedule school, fortunately, we can do from anywhere. So uh, we don't have to go into the office. So that's good. Maybe you are working from home. Um, so that's certainly part of what your day should be. But I think I think a very important part of, of, of sort of survival and balance is self-care, self-care, which is a term that feels a little frou-frou-y to me, honestly, self-care. You know, I don't think men are great at self-care as part of what it is. Or maybe we just don't, aren't, aren't sort of down with that term. But self-care, um, I think, is very important here. And self-care includes things like, obviously, trying to get some exercise um, and, uh, you know, looking after your body, trying to eat healthily and so forth. But I think also finding ways to um, sort of free your mind from conjecture. Conjecture is, a, to me, a, a debilitating condition. Uh, and I have found um, in the past, I've had a few like major traumas in my life that triggered conjecture and made me think a lot about what was going to happen and what will be the ramifications of this and that. Stuff that, you know, has some utility, I guess, but by and large is... Um, causes me stress. So um, so I think instead of that, the part of self-care that I think is important is to have some sort of way to have a meditative portion of your day. You know, so what can you do that will just quiet your mind and center you? And that's what this exercise is going to be about. I'm, so next, I'm going to play you a lesson from... Um, this class scene that I mentioned before. 
and it is, I think it's 10 or 12 minutes long. It's, I, I think, a pretty important lesson about the nature of seeing and drawing and being, in a way. So if you've taken seeing, you might remember this. You might not have seen it in a while. If you haven't taken seeing, you know, it's, it's part of this six-week course that we did. This is just one of dozens of videos, which you're welcome to sign up for if you want to. But um, if you'll hold on a second, I'm just going to go and track down this video. There we go. Uh, so here I am over here. Whoops, here I am over here. Um, you can ignore this. Let's go back here. Uh, let's close that. And let me find my video file. Hold on one second. I know I have it here. All right, here we go. Look, looking is a language. We say, look, a tree, a car, a house, a man. We apply a label to it. You know, in the Bible, God gave Adam the job to name all the animals. That's what we do. That's, that's our function. Because Labeling also helps us to, to think in an abstract way, but of course, typically, we overdo it. And instead of saying, you know, we say, look, there's a tree, instead of saying, look, there's an elm. Or, look, there's an elm that's 37 feet tall that has 500 branches, 532 branches, that has 7,863 leaves, 15 of which are kind of yellowish green, and 14 of which have a little brown hole in them. And then we completely miss going to the next level. And that level is one where, where language really doesn't matter at all. Where, where things don't have names because, because they're unique. Because there's nothing else exactly like any one of those little tiny things. And the fact is that most things in the world are like that. Most things in the world are made up of individual components that have lived and that have worn and that have discolored and that have been shaped by their experience. And so they're all different. And if we tend to label them, if we just kind of dismiss them as saying, oh, that's a cog, or oh, that's a bone, or oh, that's a human being, well, we diminish it, and we miss the moment. We miss the opportunity to really go from looking to seeing. And that's really where drawing comes in, because, because when we draw something, when we do it properly, when we slow down, and we really look carefully, slowly, we start to shed all of our judgments and our biases and our history and our baggage. And instead of bringing in colored filters of our own, instead we start to actually see what's in front of us. We quiet that part of our brain that insists on labeling and categorizing everything. And instead we start to just see what's in front of us. And, and that's key to making a decent drawing. Not to draw what you think, but to draw what's really there. And the cool thing is also that, that as you draw, time starts to slow down. And soon all you feel is your pen on the paper. You feel the scratchy end of the pen, the nib against the fiber of the paper. You can practically feel that ink flowing out and into the texture of the paper. And then eventually that goes away too. And you feel nothing. You don't bother to even notice that you feel nothing because you're in this moment. You're right here now. You're not naming what's going on. You're just seeing it. You're not thinking about whether this is art or whether you kind of suck or whether you're stupid or fat or ugly or lazy. You stop thinking about yourself and you start to connect. Connect to what's really real. What isn't fabricated by the insanity in your head, but is the truth. The truth, which is that you're, you're amazing, what you're drawing is amazing, the subject is amazing, the drawing itself will be amazing. And as you sink deeper and deeper into this relationship with your subject, you start to see more and more things. You see the edges of things. You see the textures. 
you see the shadows. And then you see the textures inside of the shadows. And then you see the shadows inside of the textures. You're going deeper and deeper. You're applying new lenses, bigger, more magnification. You're getting into scrutinizing every tiny thing, everything your eyeball is possibly capable of noticing. You don't worry about how far you have to go. You don't worry about cutting corners. You just see, and you see deeper and deeper and deeper. And you don't label what you're seeing. You don't name it. You just penetrate it. And as you go, you make discoveries. You go on a journey with the, with the line that you're creating, the observations, and you start to see hills and valleys, surprises, scary bits. You start to have this miniature adventure traveling across, around, up and down, through the darkness, up into the light, as you discover more and more things. And then when you're done, you look down at your paper, and you see a record of the trip you've taken, a map that you've drawn of all these little adventures you've had. They're all there on paper. You finally come full circle. Your odyssey is complete and you come back home again, and you feel your pen knocking against something. It's your front doorstep, your back, and slowly the merry-go-round of the world starts to revolve again. You come out of it, you waken up, and the world is still there. All the gigantic things that surround you, all these little details pull back and recede. But you're different because you've seen in a fresh way. You're revitalized, you're re-energized, and you've had revelations of what that world is like. It's like that movie about the little tiny miniature man, the incredible shrinking man, where suddenly he sees that the whole world is, is infinite, that when you get smaller and smaller so that you can fight spiders, when you get smaller and smaller so that you can be drowned in a raindrop, when you get smaller and smaller, eventually you reach the subatomic level. And that subatomic level is the same as the universe. It's infinite, and you're wandering through it. I looked up as if somehow I would grasp the heavens, the universe, worlds beyond number. God's silver tapestry spread across the night, and in that moment, I knew the answer to the riddle of the infinite. That existence begins and ends is man's conception, not nature's. My fears melted away, and in their place came acceptance. All this vast majesty of creation, it had to mean something. And then I meant something too. Yes, smaller than the smallest, I meant something too. So not to get too metaphysical, but you'll find that when you do this kind of intense drawing and you really scrutinize what you're doing, that suddenly matter takes on a new form. Suddenly the tiny little holes and bumps that you encounter on your subject become like giant mountains, become like Mount Everest, and you're scaling them and you're finding every tiny detail as you go along. And you lose yourself. You lose yourself and your place in the world but you emerge, as I said, feeling different, seeing things differently. And you look down at that drawing and you say, well, that's amazing. And you might frame that drawing, you might sell it, you might toss it in the trash, it doesn't matter, because every step of that journey you took is here. It's recorded in your brain. You will be able to see details when you close your eyes in bed at night. It's all in there, all recorded for you. And for the first time, you've really seen. You've seen. So, how are we gonna have this incredible metaphysical journey? <clears throat> well, we're gonna start in the kitchen. We're gonna get a piece of bread. Probably not a piece of white bread. Not a piece of super processed bread. I would say a nice piece of homemade bread would be awesome. A piece of freshly baked bread with 
nooks and crannies. Because what we're going to do is we're going to toast that bread. And so we're going to, as we toast it, it's going to solidify its structure. And then we're going to take that piece of toast. We're not going to put butter on it. You could later on if you want. But for now, we're going to just put it in front of us on a plate. We're going to get out our sketchbooks. And we're going to look down at this piece of toast. And maybe we're going to begin by drawing, taking a journey around the outer perimeter. We could do that. Or maybe just a part of the perimeter. Just take a corner of the piece of toast and draw that outside edge. And then we're going to look deeper. And we're going to move in from the edge and we're going to look at what we see. At all the little holes. And these aren't regular holes, they're all different. Little tiny pock marks that are created by the air inside the dough expanding and escaping as the bread is cooked. Each one is different. They're like the mountains of the moon. And we're going to take our eyes and we're going to rub them we're going to affix mental goggles to telescope us deeper and deeper inside this piece of toast. We're going to get deeper and deeper and so we observe the smallest possible thing that we can see and we're going to draw the edge of it. And then we're going to move over to what is the very next thing we see a millimeter away. It's a different hole. It's a little bump. It's a cast shadow. It's a crumb. And we're going to record that. And then we're going to move on. And we're going to cover part of the toast. Now, you could be super ambitious and set out to draw this entire toast. You could probably spend a full day just mapping out this piece of toast. You don't need to though. We can take a section of it and then if we wanted to we could hop to a different part of the toast and record that. But the key thing that we're going to do here is we're going to see. and we're going to, there, We have no labels for what these things are. I'm calling them nooks and crannies and holes and fissures but that's not really what they are. They're things that are nameless and so we're not going to apply labels to them. We're just going to explore them. We're going to go deeper into them put down one and then the next and then the next and you're going to cover a section of it until you feel satisfied that you know that toast and then we're going to get back together again Pity, man yeah that was a blast from the past i haven't looked at that in a long time back in the days when i had long flowing locks and when the streets of New York were full of traffic noises. Mm. Ah, yes, alas. Let me just um, fix this. And here we go. Yes. Ah, that's, uh, that is weird. Was it weird for you? Was it weird for you to see that? Anyway, um, my thoughts were, yes, uh, Mike Lowry. Mike Larry, the famous illustrator and uh, erstwhile faculty member at Sketchbook School, um, is is here too. Uh, lunch is provided, except here in Phoenix, it is breakfast. So we are drawing um, granola. So I just shook up my granola and ruined my my drawing. But um, you know, I'm going to continue. Let me see if I can zoom in on this at all. How does one do that? Um, this work. So I have this very jelly root thing here. Ah, oh, there we go. Yes. Okay. So literally, I have an iPad that's sitting on a carpet covered shelf that apparently was originally for a cat. <laughs> and, um, the iPad is on a piece of wood dangling over this desk. And as you can see, there are wires everywhere. So less than optimal, 
but nonetheless. Let's go back to drawing. What do you say, guys? So hopefully you found something that is um, that is nice and crumbly like this. You see how there's all, I mean, this these pieces are, are uh, as I said, random, organic, and complex. That was my request for a subject, piece of subject matter. And, you know, I'm trying to go, as I showed you in that video, as deep as possible um, in studying each of these little pieces and trying to capture them. So, um, how's it going with you? Should we just continue doing this? I imagine that if you aren't doing this, it might be a little tedious watching me draw granola. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk that we would be here now together doing this drawing? granola in lockdown. But anyway, um, let me, let's just keep going and let's try and clear our minds of other things and just instead focus on the details and the roughness and the, and the super specific bits. Um, get out of the way. Get this out of there. Okay. Um, of Whatever the organic thing is you found, is it a leaf? Is it a piece of wood? I was thinking you could maybe draw the sole of a running shoe, but then I thought, well, that is a little predictable, it's a, right? It's it's a predictable pattern, and so you might end up finding that you were yearning for a ruler or something rather than getting deeper and deeper into the grain, the the, um, the, the, maybe the breakdown of that rubber, you know, as, as it wore away. Those kinds of things, you know, make it feel, make even a uh, mechanical thing feel more organic. You know, then you could, if you wanted to, you could also get into adding hatching and adding shadow so that you um, make it feel more dimensional. Or if you wanted, you could just do a basic contour drawing where you're just drawing the outsides of the shapes. Um, but you could keep doing this uh, forever. I see people talking about firewood nuts, a sponge. Sponge? I think I've tried drawing a sponge. Sponges tend to be a, uh, a little regular, but I guess a natural sponge would certainly work. But try and try with like a dishwashing sponge. Why not? Um, yeah. Bread. Oh, Amy is uh, avoiding carbs. I know. But you don't have to eat it. You can simply draw it, which is zero calories, zero carbs. Um, so yes, an English muffin, Corrine, is a great choice, particularly a toasted one. And fun to eat, too. So yeah, just find yourself something. I mean, if you had... Uh, a rock, a rock might work, or even a handful of a handful of gravel. Could be lots of things. Are you going outside much these days? I'm walking. Our crazy. I have to say this quietly. Our crazy um, Australian Shepherd dog that's here, Luna, the lunatic. She. It's, what's interesting about walking her is it is both um, a legs workout from um, you know, putting down a couple miles with her, but also an upper body workout because I'm constantly having to rein her in, the anchor back, pull her around. She's nuts. Um, but she is full of life and, and interested in everything. So it's interesting to be with her because she sees 
everything she hears, every bird in the trees. She notices people and dogs from blocks away. So, you know, she's, uh, she's an interesting companion for my morning walks. What else? Other than that, we've been sitting in the backyard. Oh, yesterday it rained here in Phoenix, which it's not going to do again for a few days. So, um, we weren't able to sit in the backyard and we had a, we did manage to do a kind of a barbecue, but there's nothing like barbecuing in the rain to be sort of depressing. <laughs> um, but we did that and it wasn't that depressing. Um, let's see who, let's see if any, I mean, I was going to say urban sketching. I've noticed that there are a few uh, conversations online about urban sketching outings and obviously urban sketching, you can't go and do group outings with people right now. Um, but there's also uh, some discussion about what are the things one can draw and how you can draw them. And uh, you know, is, it, is it okay to relax some of the rules about urban sketching? Because urban sketching has certain kind of protocols of how they, um, what you're supposed to draw and how much it has to be from observation, that kind of thing. So there's some changes afoot in the world of urban sketching when one can't really do that. Um, but, you know, I have to say one godsend about this whole thing is at least, at least here in the northern hemisphere, it is springtime. So it's a beautiful time of year. And there's been, at least in Phoenix, it's been a really nice spring. And I think in New York it was too. Weird to feel so far from home in a time like this. You know, I've been trying to reach out to people and have, I mean, the good thing is that if you call somebody, they're almost always there and they're always available. They're not doing anything else. So I had a nice long chat yesterday with my friend Prashant Miranda, who is, um, he is in the Pacific Northwest. He is uh, in a very remote little village. So he's very safe there. And which I thank God for that. Um, and he is, he saw three orcas yesterday and he's seen seals and things like that. And he sits and meditates by the Pacific. So it was really nice to talk to him. And one of the reasons I was talking to him was because we were supposed to go on a trip together. Some of you may have heard of an organization called Blue Walks. You may have met some of them at SketchCon. And in fact, Mike Lowry, you know them well because you were going to lead a tour with them too. But, um, but we were, we had decided that we were going to go on a tour. The, the, the ladies who ran it had asked us if we would be willing to just go along as guests and, and see what it was like. So uh, Jenny and I were going to go in and then Kosha decided that she would come too. And Prashant... Miranda, as some of you know, was going to be the leader of this of this trip. And what it is is Blue Walks has these tours essentially where you go somewhere with an artist and you draw with them for a certain amount of time. And in this case, we were going to go for twelve days to various Greek islands. Twelve days to various Greek islands. I've never been to Greece always been fascinated by it. So yes, so we were incredibly excited. Guess what got canceled yesterday? 12 days walking through Greece at the end of April, beginning of May with Prashant Miranda. Not doing it. Not doing it for obvious reasons, but sad, you know. And, um, you know, this is, this. so we haven't taken a vacation in a really long time. And we decided that this would be a nice opportunity to do it. So now we're going to have to, I don't know, I think they may reschedule it or something. I don't know. My heart is kind of out of it now because I just, I don't know. But anyway, I got a chance to talk to Prashant, and that was nice. And, uh, you know, I talked to my friend Tommy Kane, who is growing a really good beard. And, um, you know, I'm just trying to do that every day find somebody who I haven't spoken to in a little while and ideally get to them on a video conference so we can actually see each other. 
see how the other person looks and how they're doing, faring so far. Everybody is okay, um, and you know that's reassuring. So hopefully you, you have time to reach out to your friends and loved ones too. I've been talking to my son, I've been talking to my sister, my mother. It's all nice. So yes. So, all right, well, I think I'm going to continue doing this a little bit longer. I see a lot of you are talking about vacations canceled. June archaeological dig in Israel. Damn it. Who else? Karen's trip to Ireland canceled. Yep. Yep. So, I don't know. We'll come back to Greece. I mean, I'm definitely going to see Greece. So, Denise says, she took a walk today and it was strange that people I met smiled at each other and then we walked with a huge distance around each other. I know. I have that experience every morning. I walk my dog, well, my sister's mom's dog, and I see other people and we kind of like stay kind of apart from each other. And if they have a dog, we kind of don't let the dogs engage with each other. But it was very friendly, very nice. Um, I have not spoken to Jean-Christophe, but I would like to. Um, I I see from social media that he seems to be fine. And I know that he was on here yesterday. Um, so that that's great. I hope he is continuing to do well. Marnie's workshop in Chile canceled. Um, Amy's road. Uh, what is this? Six days are on hold for the Washington DC trip. Yeah, I imagine, you know, we've got to find things for kids to do. And I see a lot of illustrators are, um, including Mike Lowry, by the way, are doing online drawing things. Uh, Mo Willems is doing a fantastic one now that he's figured out some uh, production issues that seem to be plaguing him the first day. Um, Nancy had a workshop in England with Brian and Wendy Frau. Brian Frau, yes, I love that. Uh, what was that book that he did? Was it Gnomes? No, not no, um The uh, Swedish artist did the book on Gnomes. Or oh, Elves. Elves was Brian Frown's book, too. Yeah, he's amazing. It's good to know that he's still alive. I didn't even know that. Abigail's exams, graduation, got canceled. I'm so sorry to hear that. SATs that year got canceled. I'm not sure how teenagers feel about that, but Erica's trip to Bermuda. All right, this is becoming like some horrible fairies. Yes, fairies with an E. Correct. Thank you. Um, so, yes, and I also remember this this Lady Cottingley's Press Fairy, fairy Book. This was quite a sick thing that Brian Frau did. It was basically the idea was that it was this old Victorian book that uh, um, this lady had crushed fairies and caught them and squished them in the book. And these like beautiful, lifelike watercolor paintings of these various fairies that had been like dried like butterflies in this book with sort of notes about them. <laughs> yes. Well, anyway, um, thank you all for joining me today. Um, oh, tomorrow, let me tell you about tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be really good because I'm gonna have my first guest uh, and that is gonna be really fun. So tomorrow we are going to draw people. Hopefully you have at least one other person around you that you could draw. If not, get a mirror and, uh, or, if, or you could draw me or you could draw my guest. My guest is gonna be France Belleville Van Stone, uh, who is, hopefully you know her from, uh, from her, her book, Sketch, or maybe you know her from uh, Instagram, or maybe you know her from Sketchbook School because she's taught in two of our courses. And she's an amazing artist. And she's also a high school French teacher. So guess what? She has a fair amount of time on her hands these days. But she's going to be joining me tomorrow. Um, I'm hoping. She said she would. So so she's going to be drawing with me. And we are going to, um, we're going to do this thing. And then, of course, Saturday is going to be the live fountain pen workshop. So those of you who wondered if anything's up with that, Nothing is. It's going. 
It's perfect. Everything is good. We figured it all out. It's going to be amazing. And we'll see you on Saturday. Those of you who signed up, it's sold out now, so you can't sign up anymore. But those of you who have signed up, I'm going to see you at noon on Saturday. But meanwhile, the rest of you, I will see you tomorrow, Saturday, uh, Friday at uh, noon. And um, we are, just in case you had some problem finding this, now you did find it, but we are trying to start kind of early and so we can figure out where the links are going to be and then announce them because we don't know quite where YouTube and Facebook are going to put these things because we're streaming out to multiple locations. So it's a little chaotic, I realize, and I apologize for that. Thanks for finding it. Um, and we are posting, I believe, on Facebook. We're going to post links to it and on Instagram. So if you can't f figure out where we are, where I am, or in tomorrow's case, we, go to either in our Instagram thing, sketch at Sketch for School, or go to the Sketch for School, the Sketchbook School news page, and we will have the links up there a couple minutes beforehand. So I'm going to spend the first five, 10 minutes dithering so you can catch up and you won't miss anything big. All right. See you tomorrow. Thanks for joining me. And if you want to take more of seeing, please do. Oh, uh, a few other things. Sorry. Just before we go, I just want to remind you that, um, that, uh, if you have anything you've made today and you'd like to share it, put it on Instagram or Facebook with hashtag SBS Drawing Party as the tag. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I know people always say that, but it's particularly important now because if you subscribe and you click the bell, you've got to click the bell, you will get a notification as soon as I go on. Okay? So this is the way of making sure that you can easily, instantly, automatically find your way here. Or like our Facebook page, and Facebook will alert you <clears throat> to the same thing. So, and finally, please share the fact that we're doing this with your friends. The more people we have doing this, I think the calmer we'll all be, right? The calmer the world will be, the nicer everything will be. So please bring, invite anybody you want to the party, tell them about it, share what you're doing, and, uh, and you can also, of course, look at the recordings. They're all being shared post on YouTube. Every time you do one, it goes up automatically. This one is about to go there too. So thank you so much for being with me. Thanks for drawing. Keep safe. Wash your hands. You know, don't make out with strangers and uh, don't cough on anybody. Okay. Be well. Thank you.